Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and every month Plex sponsors a video here on the channel where we do a deep dive on a feature of this growing media platform. And this month we're going to be looking at Plex Cloud, which allows you to run a Plex server in the cloud and store your media on Dropbox, Google Drive, or OneDrive and be able to access everything without having anything having to run in your home or office. So you can basically have Plex run your server for you and store all of your media with a cloud service provider that is supported by the platform here. I'm going to show you how to install it and how it works. Now this is in beta at the time that I'm recording this video. Uh, it's going to be open to Plex Pass subscribers and uh, right now they're letting people in a little bit at a time just so they can get their server architecture scaled up. But this will be uh, widely available and I expect it to work uh, the way you're going to see it work in this video. So let's get to it and see how all of it works. But before we do, I do want to mention in the interest of full disclosure, this is a paid sponsorship from Plex. However, they are not reviewing this content before it is posted and all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. So let's get to it. Now to get this set up, you do need to be logged into your Plex account with a web browser. And uh, what you do is go up to the upper left hand corner here. And this is where you would normally select another server to access with your Plex account. And you'll see here now that I have Plex Cloud. I can set this up because I've been invited into the beta. And if you are a Plex Pass subscriber, my understanding is that at some point uh, this will be available to everybody and you'll have this up on your uh, list here as an option to select. So we're going to click on this right now and we are going to get all of the information to uh, get going here. So we're gonna say, let's do this. And uh, the way this works is you need to make sure that you have a cloud provider already for your storage. So get a Dropbox account, a Google Drive account, or uh, a Microsoft OneDrive account ready to go. Maybe you can load some media in there first just so it's ready for you to uh, get all of this going. And then we're going to say, let's do this, which I'm going to do here. And what I've done is I've already set up a OneDrive account because that's the only service I have that has any space left on it. But uh, I think you can actually use more than one service at a time. And maybe after I get this set up, we'll go back in and try to add a second provider to the mix and maybe uh, squeeze a video or two up on uh, to one of those services. So I'm going to select OneDrive here. And what it's going to do now is bring me out to uh, the OneDrive Drive sign in because uh, right now I've got to go in and set it up with OneDrive. So I'm going to go in and do that real quick and when I'm done I'll be right back and show you what happens next. Now each cloud provider will have its own set of things you have to approve but basically what we're doing is letting Plex on its own uh, access portions of our OneDrive here. So I'm going to say yes and allow that. So now that I've done that, Plex Cloud is getting set up and we just need to wait for it to spin up on Plex's servers. Now the way this works is that uh, Plex will be running these things when you request data from it. So the server is not always running, but when your uh, device connects up to your Plex Cloud server, it will spin up the instance for you so you can get in and use it. So that's why they're able to make this work because it's only going to allow people in when they actually need to access the server uh, versus having it running all the time like you need to do uh, when you're running your own Plex server. So there is some more efficiency to this. Uh, at the time that I'm recording this, they're allowing uh, beta users to stream as much as they want off of their server, but in the future they'll probably limit it to uh, three streams or so just because they only have so much bandwidth and uh, resources to provide. So we're going to let this finish setting up and once it's up and running, we will take a look and see how to make this work. All right, so we've got a message here saying success and the Plex Cloud is ready to go. So I'm going to click on continue here. Now, before I started recording, I uploaded a TV show and a movie. The TV show I recorded off of my uh, HD Home Run DVR uh, and the movie was something that I purchased that is DRM free. So I loaded both of those up onto uh, my OneDrive account. It's going to take a while to get all this data over because you really have to upload everything uh, that you want to watch from your home over to your cloud provider. And that's going to take up some bandwidth. You're probably going to need to have some storage available to you uh, on that cloud service provider to make it work. So the likelihood here is that you're going to probably need to pay for uh, remote storage or if you have a OneDrive account uh, with an Office 365 account, I think they give you like a terabyte to play with. So there are some ways to uh, finagle your way into getting some storage there. So I'm going to start off actually with the TV shows and I'm going to click on next here. And uh, what I'm going to do now is browse for my media folder. And uh, what I'm going to do actually is probably create a new folder here, uh, which I'm going to do on my OneDrive account. So let me go over to the OneDrive account and show you how I'm going to set this up. All right, so I'm going to go over here to my OneDrive account, and I am on my web browser right now, but you could also do this if you were uh, on your Windows computer right within the Windows Explorer because they've integrated this interface into the operating system. I'm going to make a new folder here called TV Shows, and as it turns out, I actually have two TV shows to put in there. So uh, what I'm going to do here is just drag these two files. I got the Expanse and the Daily Show that I recorded from my DVR. I'm going to drop them into that folder there, and off they go. So we're going to return now over to my Plex server. I probably need to refresh this. I'm 
I'm going to close this and then uh, browse for the folders again. And we should see now uh, TV shows here on the list. Maybe I got to refresh it that way. There we go. I'm going to select that. I'm going to click on add and uh, now I'll click add library. So what's going to happen here is just like what happens on uh, your server when you have it running locally. It's going to go in and scan that uh, library and try to find the metadata for those files. So right now it is doing that uh, on the Plex cloud. You can see the little thing going here on the side. And when this is done, uh, we'll check out what it found and see what we can do to watch this content. All right, so we are done scanning the episodes and now they're up and running here. I did have to adjust the file name on the Daily Show just because it came off my DVR and it didn't follow the naming convention for the file name that uh, Plex was looking for. So all the same behaviors you have to deal with on the uh, local server, you'll deal with with the cloud server as well. So just make sure you have everything uh, named properly. And if I go in here to the Expanse, for example, we get all the same metadata that we typically would have on our own server. So really, this is a Plex server that uh, operates in the cloud. So what I'm going to do now is just switch over to my uh, mobile device here and show you what this looks like on another uh, device. So I could place back stuff from the computer here, but I'm going to go over to my phone. And just like you would on the desktop version, you go in and select the server you wish to connect to. So I'm going to connect to the Plex Cloud. And now you can see we've got those same two episodes available to us. I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to play the uh, Daily Show here because this might require uh, some additional transcoding. Now, just like on uh, the regular Plex server, I can download it directly to my device and play it back on an airplane or something. Or I can pl uh, click play here and actually stream it remotely from uh, the Plex Cloud server. So what's happening now is that it's communicating with my OneDrive account uh, and it's getting everything ready to go for playback. This might take a little bit longer than you're used to, but uh, let's see what happens here. So I hit the play button and now we're just going to wait and see what happens. There we go. So it is up and running. This took about five or 10 seconds for it to uh, get playing here, but it seems to be playing back just fine. And again, this is streaming over the internet uh, from the cloud. Now, what I'm going to do here is just go over to uh, this uh, little knob there and go over to playback settings because I want to put on some uh, transcoding. So right now it is transcoding at four megabits per second at 720p, but maybe I've got a challenging connection and I want to go lower than that. So we'll do a, a little transcoding test here to go down to 480p. So I'll select 480p and we'll have those Plex servers start working on uh, getting that content played back at the lower bit rate there. Uh, so it's going to start up again because it has to launch a new transcoding session, but that is what it's going to do right now. We'll let it uh, sync itself up again. I would imagine this will probably take about the same amount of time just to get uh, that transcoding active on the cloud server, and then it'll start uh, pushing out the lower bandwidth file to my phone here. So let's give it a second here. And uh, there we go. We're now at 480p. And if you're, again, if you're on a, a mobile device using your cellular data, you might want to go with that. It doesn't look all that bad on a small screen like this, and you can uh, get everything working there. So pretty cool stuff. We're able to uh, load things up on the server here and uh, transcode them over to a mobile device. All right, so that works pretty nicely. Now, if you want to add additional cloud services to your account, it's a little counterintuitive. So you don't do it over here. You've got to go up to the upper right-hand corner of your screen to the account section. And uh, what you do there is go over to account, and then uh, you can add in your cloud service providers here on the left. So you'll notice here we've got Plex Cloud and then Cloud Sync. Uh, what you want for this feature is Plex Cloud. And then I can go in here and uh, add additional services. So you can see I have my OneDrive connected right now, but I don't have my Drop box and Google Drive connected. So we're going to uh, add one in now, add in the Dropbox here. And again, you click the link button and that will bring you over to uh, Dropbox to go through that permission screen that we saw earlier so that you can then add that to the mix. I'm going to add my Dropbox now and uh, we'll take a look and see how we can interact with that and the OneDrive at the same time. All right, so now we've got the ability to add some additional folders from Dropbox. I'm going to go over to my TV shows section here and click on edit. And just like you can on your server running at home, you can go here to browse more folders. And now you'll see I have Dropbox available here that I did not have available before. So I could create a folder in Dropbox with a bunch of episodes loaded in there. And then it will consolidate both of those two different folders from two different service providers uh, into a single spot, which could be very useful because you can then store some stuff on Dropbox, some stuff on Google Drive, and some things over on OneDrive. I did notice that I had to restart the server, which you can do in that account screen uh, when I set that up because it wasn't finding that Dropbox drive right away. So you may want to just go in and click that restart button. It just takes a second for it to re-spin up the instance on the Plex server. And then that uh, uh, Dropbox icon uh, will appear here. So again, we've got access now to two different cloud service providers. And I could even add in my Google Drive also if I wanted to and have uh, things stored at all three locations. 
And I'm also going to set up a photos folder real quick for you just so you can see how that works. But uh, you should know that the syncing feature where you can have the phone automatically download every photo taken to Plex doesn't work with the cloud server at the time that I'm recording this video. So that's one feature that is not on here, but uh, all the other features that you're used to uh, with your photos are there, including the ability to do their uh, advanced feature neural net stuff where it will uh, try to tag the photos based on what's in those pictures. I'm just going to click on add here and add a Dropbox folder. It is going through and uh, studying all my photos here and they're starting to fill in now, as you can see. And then you saw we did that advanced meta search where it can go out and find elements of your pictures and integrate them for you. So for example, I can go in here and type in rainbow and it will pull up pictures that I uploaded to the Plex cloud server of rainbows. And here's one right here. So it found that automatically and uh, tagged the photo appropriately. I can do flowers, for example, and it will find uh, pictures of flowers as well. So pretty cool stuff. And again, that works on your uh, local server, but you can also have it look for photos now in your Dropbox folder and uh, integrate them into your Plex experience through the Plex cloud without having to store them locally. Again, remember you cannot yet upload photos from your phone, but if you do take the photo, put it into your Dropbox folder that's linked to your Plex account, uh, when it goes through and re-indexes again, it will find those photos and put them back into your album there. So there are some uh, clever ways you can get photos out of your phone back into your cloud service provider, and you can even integrate them in. So like you saw with the TV show uh, version there, uh, we can bring in all these uh, folders from various cloud services and put them into one directory here on uh, your Plex account so you can integrate uh, photos from all of your providers in one spot. So really cool stuff from Plex here and that is the Plex Cloud. Uh, we will be looking at Cloud Sync when we do our syncing episode probably next month where you can uh, synchronize things from your Plex server whether it's on the cloud or uh, in your home to your devices. Now that's a little different because uh, the Plex Sync requires those files to be stored on your server and this is a way to be able to store things on Dropbox or Google Drive without having to store them on your server and that's really the advantage that uh, the Plex Cloud uh, brings to the mix. So stay tuned. We'll be doing more on this. If you have questions, do leave them down in the comments below, and I might do a follow-up if I missed anything important in this video. This is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.